Welcome to the Spring Hills Podcast. My name is Garrett Elliott. I am the worship pastor here at Spring Hills. And on today's episode, it's part two of the story of Spring Hills. Now, last week, Brett and Eve Avlakiotis began sharing the story behind Spring Hills and what a story it's been. From meeting in a band up through the first year of the church plant, Brett and Eve followed God's calling from California to Dallas and back to California to start Spring Hills Community Church on Easter Sunday of 1992. And while those years had their challenges, the miracles that God performed far outweighed those challenges as Spring Hills finished off the first year of existence by merging with California Community Church. Today, Brett and Eve are back to share the highlights of those next 10 years in part two of the story of Spring Hills. Let's get to it. Last week, we went over the beginnings of Spring Hills Church. I want to ask a couple of quick questions. You can give quick answers that we didn't get to that belong in that time span. So first of all, where did the name Spring Hills come from? Ah. This is a great story. Okay, so I'll give my version. Okay. We were packed up, moving from Dallas to Santa Rosa, and we did not have a name. And we were going through West Texas. I was in one car, and Eve was in the other, and I saw a sign or Spring Hills, Texas. And there's a Spring Hill Road here, right? Yeah. It's not yeah, far out, away. Out but west. we did not know about that. Yeah. So I th- said to Eve. So it literally had nothing to do with the Spring Hill? No. Because it's nothing. not that far from it. No, no way. No. Nothing, no. Didn't nothing, even know nothing, that nothing. that street was there. Yes. Uh, so I said, Spring Hills. I like I like the name. It just sounded good. So I said, I think we should be Spring Hills Community Church. Why and Eve has a different version. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Well, the community was from, at the time, Rick Warren was doing all of his, um, you know, seminars and for church planting, and he was suggesting community, add community. Community was a big, warm, mm-hmm. you know, feeling. Okay. Um, my version, though, I was out walking. So he never shared this with me. Let's be clear. Okay. Okay. So I am out walking our so you neighborhood. you hide things from your wife. That's what yes. she said. <laughs> I am walking our neighborhood by Coffee Park, Uh and I look up at the hills, and they're green. They're beautiful. Where does my help come from? It comes from the hills. Spring, new life. It's beautiful. That's where the name came from. So you're saying you came up with it. Yes. (laughs) And you think you came up with it. Yeah. and then A friend of mine sent me a sign. Years later. Years later, a sign from West Texas. He he heard this story and he saw it and took a picture of it. And, so you uh, have proof. Yes. Yeah. Spring Hills. Yeah. Tech, it's kind of like Hills the kind of like the you know the movie gets made and you're like that was my idea. I have it written on a napkin and right. you need the proof. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, in that first year, were you the only staff on on? Uh... Yes, uh, I was. Okay. The only staff member. And um, when did when did you? We had some else? great help though. Great volunteers. Volunteers. Well. An, Dave and Laura Nielsen came to from Texas to be with us. So. Yeah, we had some people yeah. that first year move from Dallas yeah. to help. Oh, wow. He worked as an accountant, and uh, so they uprooted. They uprooted. As... They were singles. Well, they were young marrieds, okay. but there were a couple singles that came wow. with us too. So we had a little core group. So we do need to. That make was sure. pretty that's, cool. Yes. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. That's that's huge, man. You're planting a church from uh, moving in from another state, and you have people coming with you. That's great. Yeah, and we um, knew somebody, too, that was here, Lane Carlson, who was a good friend in Dallas who lived uh, down in San Rafael, and uh, he was driving up to help us each weekend, wow. which was amazing. Yeah, too. that's and that's a that's a good trek for, yeah. for doing yeah. that. Yeah. Okay, and then um, last, last time we talked about Easter Sunday 1992 was the launch. Uh, Bur- Luther Burbank Center, correct? Correct. Okay, and I didn't know that. I thought you guys came to Luther Burbank later on, so that was a surprise to me. Uh, at the end of that first year, there's a church merger. So let's talk about that merger. How did it come about? What church was it? What was the the, yeah, the process uh, like? The church in town, California Community Church, um, was started four years, I want to say, before Spring Hills, before we arrived, and their pastor uh, left and so they heard about Eve and I. Uh, actually, I think what what happened was I was we were looking for worship leaders, and I asked if their worship leader could come and fill in, or if he knew of somebody, you know. And he 
he was great to connect us up with some worship leaders. But then he realized, well, you guys are starting a church. Do you want to be the pastor of California Community Church? Because they were looking for a church. And their style. And how, how long into, the year, into Spring Hills was this? This would have been at the end of our first year, towards the end of our first year. Okay, so you hadn't quite been around a year yet. No. Correct. And uh, so the, he was like, well, we need a pastor, and how about interviewing to be our pastor? So we thought about it, and we we thought, ah, we, you know, they've been going for four years, and if you go in, uh, you, you still, Yeah, you mentioned that last you time. You still can't do whatever you want to do, so... Uh, we suggested that uh, that they merge with Spring Hills, and uh, which they ended up doing. You know, we prayed together. We moved this location to where we were, and uh, uh, they became from California Community Church. They became Spring Hills. Did they have a campus? No, they were renting oh, okay. a location, a warehouse on Piner. But it was a blessing because the people that came from California Community Church, many of which are still at our church. Yeah, that's what, like the Bruners were. Came yeah, yeah, right? yeah, bless the Bruners and the Sackets. We love Denise the Bruners, Carpenter. man. Not yeah, to, yeah. I, the Garrett Bruner is Shout out my to hero Garrett right and Rod and Judy. They're amazing. Uh, so great leadership, and the worship leader came over, and so we had better worship, great leaders, people who were giving. So it, was this the first uh, staff that was on paid yeah, so Andy ended up being the first maybe part-time, I think. Uh, we also had a children's director out of okay. that, too. So it, it really it really catapulted us to the next level, you might say, from just being a baby church to, wow, we had probably 150 people or something like that. What's a So with the church merger, it's got to be somewhat complicated with, I mean, it's like a marriage, right? You're bringing two churches <laughs> together. You're, you're still learning about each other, the personality. What, did everything just stay with how you were doing it? Or was there anything that was like, the like bylaws? And um, had, did you have a board at Spring Hills yet? Yeah, so we were able to form a board through okay. uh, some people that were coming to Spring Hills and also had merged with us. And so that was good. Okay. Um, and uh, our styles were similar. There were some differences, but the styles were similar enough. The demographic was similar enough where we're real fortunate because churches uh, that merge sometimes, you know, there's an adjustment. Oh, Let's yeah, just totally. put it that way. <laughs> there's a little adjustment. Well, um, maybe like a, I don't know if it's the right word to use, but a power struggle of like, yeah. who's making the decisions here? Is it, yeah. is it the, is it this church or this church that's making the decisions and you gotta, you gotta merge to be one and it's no, it's our church instead of. Yeah. This and fortunately this. the, the leaders like the Bruners and the Sackets and others, there was some real, spiritual, you know, vision and maturity. Yeah. So it, it was a blessing. That I speaks think. a lot about that, that group too. I mean, they're still here yeah. serving and they're, yeah. I mean, you've got, they've been on the board too, right? Yes. I think. Yeah. So oh, I mean, yes. you've got people that are really involved for 28 years. That's yeah. amazing. That's really cool. Uh, and you've only been around that long. So we got, so we're at the end of 1992, right? So we're in 1993 now. So th my chunk of time here that I want to cover um, it's pretty vague because I don't know a whole lot that happened here. So let me ask this question. At what point did you no longer feel like a church plant and you felt like you were an established church? Wow. That's a great question. I mean, we, we through the merger with California community church, Spring Hills became self-supporting in the second year. <clears throat> so my salary was paid for. Uh -huh. Uh, so we went off of support, uh, which was uh, great. And so, at that point, uh, somewhere in that, probably in 1993, you know, we were self-supporting. We we're still renting, you know, facilities. Um, we had a staff. I think, it, you know. I but think it, we felt like a church. There were yeah. challenges, though. For example, yeah. the children's area. Yeah. Setting up, you said you are meeting in the hallway. We're meeting <laughs> in, yes. Uh, it, was, it was beautiful. I mean, we set up everything, and we're very creative with it to create different areas. The nursery sometimes had a room, sometimes did not have yeah. a room. So it was challenging, but um, that was, I mean, so you still, yeah, felt you still like feel you so temporary, so temporary. And we finally getting this closet that we were putting everything into every week. So that felt, it was good. That felt good, but it was challenging. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. Breaking your days, stuff down. Your days are really long. They're but when you no longer guess, have but... to have to haul it anywhere. Yeah. Uh, oh man. That's so, yeah. it's so nice. It's, Hauling that trailer around, different. man. It's yeah. not <laughs> So, you get tired of that, right? So oh, the, yeah. yeah. So the trailer days were over, but still just the that set up, up every down. week. Yeah. It, and not feeling like it, 
it felt like a public facility up there too. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you were always wondering yeah. who's around and sure. being careful of everything. Yeah. So everyone. Yeah. I yeah. was wondering with the, did, so a ch- a search for a campus, when did that start? Did you get, was it like right away, like we got to find a campus or was it like, hey, we're good here for a while. This Dutch is not on the well, docket yet. Tell about the merger, what we inherited with the merger. Oh, California yeah. California Community yeah. Church. So that California Community Church, they had merged with Cottingtown Baptist Church. Correct. And I'm trying to think they probably. A year or two before. Yeah, a year or two before. And Cottingtown Baptist Church had a little church here in Santa Rosa off Kernville Avenue. And uh, so uh, when we merged, we were, you know, now we had this little Cottingtown Baptist Church. We went into, we remodeled it. Uh, it was our first little capital campaign. We remodeled it and we'd have midweek offices. stuff there. We had our offices, offices oh, okay. there. Cool. We had small groups there. A place to rehearse the band. Yeah, the band rehearsed there. So that was like Baptisms. a major blessing. Oh yeah, Baptisms. that's huge. Um, and did you, was it not big enough for the congregation? Is no, that why you no, didn't meet there? No, no. And the location wasn't. Seat about 80. Great. Yeah, okay. it just seated, seated about 80. Sat. Yeah, so perfect okay. for the smaller. Yeah, the smaller for a midweek. midweek. But uh-huh. it became very, it became very significant when it came to buying, buying our current property because real estate prices uh, over the years, the 15 years. Did they go up? Oh my, <laughs> did they go up? And that little property was zoned for high density housing. Oh, wow. And so that little property. There's another uh, miracle. Yeah, it was another miracle that God, we'll talk about yeah. that uh, when we talk about the property because that was very significant. Yeah, listeners, you don't want to miss that. part three because uh, that story is pretty amazing. If you haven't heard it before, we'll get to it, The we're, why we're on this campus now. Um, Eve, I wanted to ask you this specific question. Did you see between, uh, I, I ask you because my wife is the one that notices these kinds of things more than I do. Um, did you see unique gifts come out that you weren't aware that you had or that you weren't aware Brett had in the way that you were leading the church? You know, I think they were just um, maybe more developed or more, I don't know, highly used hospitality. And then, uh, Brett, are you good at hospitality? No, he is not. <laughs> I was at the time. I but, grumble. I just grumble. I was at the time. I, you know, you kind of go through, in a, with a gift mix, you kind of go through a little bit of um, uh, seasonal things, it seemed mm. like, with, I don't know. But um, faith was um, yeah. instrumental during, I mean, you know. Fa- our faith grew our a Our faith lot. grew a lot Fortunately, that time. I, I came in with about eight years of full-time ministry yeah. experience in a large church. So mm. that... That well, really helped us. And we had started a singles group in Dallas. From scratch. From scratch, where we had to meet at a restaurant off campus because there wasn't room at the church. Mm-hmm. It was a church of about 2,000 people, but there wasn't room. So we ended up meeting at a Fuddruckers. And Fud so, Ruckers. Oh, wow. Fuddruckers restaurant. Do our restaurant. listeners know yeah. Fuddruckers? I yeah. do. Oh, yeah. I know it. So we had about 80 people on the patio, and then that grew to like 120, 150 or so. We took over the whole wow. restaurant on Sunday yeah. morning. And then we'd eat there. That's yeah. amazing. And then we went to the Hilton too. Hotel after that. So we kind of were used to going, you know, praying and saying, okay, God, what's next? And then seeing what was next. Yeah. yeah. So we're... You never had a chance to get comfortable. No. So Which you just kind of keep, good thing. keep going. Yeah. yeah. Keep getting going. comfortable can be bad when you right. just kind of get in your groove like this. How we do things. Still and, don't that feel like we're settled in, especially with COVID right now. We're not settled. I think yeah, I would really... say to compliment Eve, I would say that it was, there was a lot of, it was test. There was testing, you know, it was testing for me. It was slower than the whole thing yeah. was slower than I wanted. But for Eve, there was a lot of stress. We had Angelique who uh-huh. was two years old. Then Josh came along in 1993 uh-huh. And so you had two kids, she's doing the children's ministry, doing the kids, being hospitable, uh, encouraging me. Uh, wow. Oh, yeah. Do you know how often I thank my <laughs> wife for being supportive? It is so huge. It and I tell, I, I try to remember to tell her that often because you can't do it by yourself. It's crazy that it's just like, I, you know, when she's just like, how can I help you? I'm like, you are helping me. You, you're taking, you're taking care of the kids. I don't have to worry that my kids are being right. cared for, you know, like just the things that. That she does it just. Eve, yeah, I gotta I, ask. Do you mean to have your headphone on backwards there? No. You can flip. It, you can flip that. Nice flip, it, look. flip it. You can yeah. flip it around no, I, so you can I, hear I, in that go. ear too. How's that, honey? Great. How's now that? you can you know hear what? us in both ears. I actually ears. like it off. 
Oh, great. you do whatever you like. Do yeah. whatever you like. Oh, you uh, Brett, what you said there, though. It's your singing career, you must like to have a little ear. I like, oh, a, yeah. little, I like a little live sound. I only wear sound. one of them on the weekends, yeah. too. I like <laughs> a little live sound. Although so I'm close to deaf in one of my ears. Mm-hmm. Um, your, what you had mentioned there, Brett, actually was close to what I, my next question was going to be. In what ways did you feel God stretching you in those first years? So patience, faith, um, learning learning more about evangelism or discipleship. or what, what, How were you being stretched, both of you, not just Brett? Yeah, I was uh, being stretched a lot in patience, I would mm-hmm. say. You know, we tried a lot of things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember in the first year we sent out 15,000 direct piece, you know, direct mail pieces yeah. about this singer guy who was going to come and, you know, be on the weekend and it was going to be a super weekend. and uh, 15,000 oh direct gosh. mail pieces. Yeah. Okay, so this was going to give our church a real shot, you know. <laughs> Nobody came. That's Nobody. discouraging. Oh, my goodness. Nobody. And I, and I remember even being kind of embarrassed. Should I correct you on this? Which yes. singer was it? John. Uh, oh, you're right. You're right. I do not need to correct you. Yeah. I was yeah. thinking of the other guy. Yeah, uh, the where, other guy. Where the Krulishes ended up coming. Oh, okay. That wasn't very spectacular either, but no, the Krulishes came. But one family. And we have family. Catherine and on our still still here. Yeah, yes. that's great. So, yeah. so that's what I was going to. That was, was Bob gonna, Bennett. Yeah. Bob Bennett, yes. So it, the patience thing was we just we just tried these big things, and then we would do, you know, big, small group emphasis and um, an outreach emphasis. And, man, it was just like... Um, Getting to the end of ourselves. Mm-hmm. That, the big lesson was, and I share this in the growth track uh, class that we have, that uh, the end of probably in the end of the first year into the second year, the, the, the saying that helped me so much was it's not methods and it's not mechanics, it's miracles. Right. And that, I just hung on to that for a long time. I was like, okay, it's not methods or mechanics, it's miracles. In mm-hmm. other words, it's God. It's God who causes the growth. First Corinthians chapter three, we, you know, Paul says, I planted Apollos watered, but it's God who causes the growth. That's right. what I had to learn. And, you know, and hang I'm, on, I'm to. still being reminded of that. It's and, hard, man. You know, I mean, like you, I, it's gotta be similar to, uh, your, just a relationship with God. It's always growing. Right. And having, being a, being in ministry, you're never done, which is something, again, I really appreciate about this staff is that. Kiki is so good at like not letting us get co- too comfortable. That's like, right. okay, okay, we got that figured out now. What's next? Exactly. And let's get better at this and let's mm-hmm. do better at this. And, you know, it's something that I really appreciate about yeah. uh, working with, with this group. So I'd say patience. Um, patience was a big one for you. You know, and then raising the little guys, Kiki and Josh, was, mm-hmm. a, was a joy during that time. Saturdays, we've always talked about this. Saturdays were so busy. Mm-hmm. You know, although, with, and, yeah, well, th- that, but just getting the sermon together and, and I was, I did the bulletin, you know, I designed the bulletin, printed it at Kinko's at uh, 11 at night. Oh my goodness. And uh, then our, we had a little copier at home, one of those little tiny things that, you know, and then you get misfeeds and I, and Paper so, jams yeah. constantly. Those and 90s get, printers were We get up early on Sunday morning to re-go through the message. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they were... That hasn't changed. Yeah, right. They were they were kind of exhausting days. Mm-hmm. Um, Eve, how did you feel like you were being stretched in those, those years? I think just the constant pace. And then, you know, we went through different challenges and trials. So then you're saying, okay, God, you know, what's... You know, when just, trials come your way, not yes, if. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. And um, just realizing uh, there's spiritual warfare. Um, so just praying, just learning, growing, growing yeah. during that time. Mm-hmm. Tough times. I mean, you have some, like with the merger, you have people that come over and then they wanted a different church, mm-hmm. you know, and they wanted to go back to the, the way it was. And uh, so, I mean, that's to be expected. That happens all the time. We had a couple of situations that were difficult that we had to work through. Um, and it was sort of a challenge to the vision, I'd say. I mean, I, I felt like in some cases it was, you know, challenging. Even I, is this the church that you feel God wants you to plant, Spring Hills? Or, you know, because you have other people saying, we want the church to be this way, we want it to be different. And you're like challenged to how, how much conviction do you have God's calling you mm-hmm. to a certain kind of church? So, now, those were difficult days. I'd say that's something I had to learn. Mm-hmm. I had to learn uh, that people have a different idea 
of what church should look like, what it should be. Um, and uh, so and, that's okay. Yeah, that's you know, why we have just go to another church. Go to yeah. another church. We have that, different you know? churches. Yeah, <laughs> we have different churches, and you got, and and just being okay with that. This you know? church, the music's too loud. This one, it's too quiet. Yeah, this exactly. one, it's this too contemporary. Too contemporary. Yeah. We, want we want more, more hymns. Traditional. We want, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just, so. yeah, there's all, it never stuff stops. all over the place. It never stops. Uh, can you think of any landmark moments through the 90s? Let's say like 93 to, I don't know, let's say 2000, um, where you thought this was just like really a, maybe a growth period or something that was just huge that happened within the church and it doesn't have to be like the church grew from this number to this number but but you know like you saw a significant spiritual growth or you just felt like it was a really healthy time when you planted this or started this group or i don't know what anything like that was the purpose driven life yeah i was thinking about that what year was that we did a small group campaign that was huge maybe it was that i don't know now because we met in the big auditorium yeah we ended up with a big rally oh when did you move to multiple services Pretty soon. It was yeah. within that first year, I think. We okay. went to two services. Yeah, we went to two services. Because, because kids area and the auditorium. The auditorium, I mean, we were still, what, I don't know. We weren't filling no, the auditorium. No, but giving but alternatives, option, giving options, options is a way to reach more people. Because yeah. you know? so some people, a, they can't come to the 11 o'clock service. 9.30. For whatever reason, but they could have if you had a nine. You Were know. you one of the we first also... ones to do a Saturday service around here? Yeah, I'd say we probably yeah. were. Because that, was, that when... was still really rare. We When we planted our church in Turlock, we, that was when we met with Saturday nights because yeah. the, the building we were in was being used on Sundays. Yeah. And it was it was weird because in, nobody was meeting on Saturday nights, yeah. and the only things that were happening were special events. So it was like... Your normal church is Saturday night. Then, you know, all the guys love it because they watch football all day the next yeah. day, right? But So, yeah, when you think that about That was when we moved to the Seventh-day Adventist school. Yeah, so that, that's right. So a right. little later. We, we moved. That was a significant move for mm-hmm. us. We moved from Wells Fargo Center, Merlot Theater, to the Redwood Adventist Academy. I, okay, this, I thought this was, I thought it was flip-flopped. So you were Burbank then that. Then, okay. We were yeah. Burbank for 17 years. Okay. Yeah. And then the Redwood Adventist Academy, we moved there because they would give us a Saturday night slot. Oh, okay. And we couldn't get it at Burbank. And when we moved there, oh, yeah, I'd say the whole feel of the place was better. That's next week. Oh, no, we'll that, get- no this is next week. Spring Hills property, right? That, that's, but, but, the, but that leads into it. But it's part so of the story. It's fine. Okay. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. I wanted to talk about the purpose-driven life. Oh, yeah. yeah so, I got so it. That was, that was my moment. fault. I, I gave you the tangent the, of how the many The purpose-driven life thing, we ended up with, I think, 100 people in small groups. Which was a lot. That's Which was, for us was like a significant. lot. Significant. Yeah. We were like, we were getting 30, 35 people in small groups. And then we did purpose-driven life, and there was 100. And and what was percentage like of your church was that? Over close to a half. A That's quarter, awesome. Probably a quarter. We're, get, we're getting upwards of 350, 350, something That's like awesome. that. That's awesome. So we were blown away. And then we ended up, you know, buying that book for everybody. And then we did a big celebration in the main auditorium. And we must have had four or 500 in the auditorium. I don't know. And so that was good. And with East, well, no, I'll say that for next week. Because the, when was the switch to the Adventist church? Like 2007 or something like that? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yeah, we'll get to that one next week then. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any other landmark moments throughout the '90s, early 2000s that really stand out to you? That's well, a great you, one to, keep, to have in the small group. Keep push. going. Yeah, keep going. We had a we had a worship leader who was very gifted at outreach, you know, and uh, our philosophy at that time was to, you know, like we would do. Uh, uh, we might do a secular song to open the service, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then we did we did a lot of drama sketches, and we were trying to create that mo- was big in the movie late 90s, clip. Huh? Yeah, we'd have a movie clip with that old video projector. Yeah, yeah, we'd have a movie clip, and we do creative, creative, creative. And the idea was, you know, let's get let's be really creative and draw people in. Mm-hmm. You know, you're trying to grow as a church, mm-hmm. and uh, for us, it really never worked. I guess that's the there best. Were some high mo- there were some high We had some good points, moments though. with mm-hmm. that. Uh, but some of the Christians were kind of going, eh, you know, what is this? And then we'd, we'd pick a movie clip, but it would last too long. It'd be like a three-minute clip. And mm. it's like, mm. you know, we, we, we were learning how to do those. Yeah. And then it's, yeah, it was kind of an eh. Um, and so that particular worship leader, on good terms, left our church. And we, we brought in another worship leader who was very 
uh, worshipful. It was a, it was more of a shift to building the body of Christ and not just being outreach. I still believe a lot in outreach, but it was it was more to build the body. And he had particular gifts um, along those lines. And we did focus on outreach with yeah Easter. We've we've done the egg hunt from day one. Oh yeah, you were in the Easter. You were the bunny. Yeah, well, that's how we started the church. Well, he wasn't the actual. He was the bunny for the for the advertising. But I wasn't. But he wasn't oh, the not bunny at the, day. He yet. didn't preach in it. No, <laughs> no, he did yeah. not. Let's so make we, that we kind of shifted. We kind of shifted. And I don't remember exactly what year it was. Right around maybe ninety five. We, we, we shifted a little bit from being all outreach to being special event outreach and more building the body pick and choose where yeah. the outreaches without, are without and, being yeah. ingrown you know churches are in danger of being but we ingrown. always did like christmas really big yeah. in the main yeah. auditorium yeah I, we, so well the first couple of years we were probably in the small one but then we went to the big auditorium yeah. I, I would say you know what i'm trying to say in yeah. all of that is just that uh the sheep were happier oh you know? Which that's good. Happy sheep. The, right? happy the sheep. sheep were happier. And the sheep uh, ended up actually, because they were so happy, they were inviting more friends. That's awesome. Yes. Which um, worked, yeah. Which happy worked sheep. better. Happy sheep. Um, and we're always moving the sheep to think outreach. But it, it sort of really cemented my philosophy. Now, I, I really want to feed the sheep, take care of the sheep, and then get the sheep thinking about their lost friends. Yeah. Build, and yeah, make them happy. Build and them then up. They go send reach them out. Friends. That's it. Build them up. Send them out. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. That was very significant. Yeah. Um, so I was going to ask also. Th- we we've gotten to this a little bit. Just I've, you had the children's ministry right away. Uh, what were the other ministries that came around? Like student ministries. When did you get that? When did you have a youth pastor come in? Was that all around the same time? Didn't you in that? Yeah, because we were g- growing with that I'd merge. Say. We started growing and the, the purpose driven life. Small groups grew. I think our shift to, uh, you know, focusing on the sheep a little more uh, started growing the church. And then we had a, a young young man in the church who is also a pastor locally, Billy Andre. He became our first youth pastor. Oh, he was the first one? Yeah. I didn't and know he was first he one. Became, he became... He got saved at the church. Yeah, he became a like Christian. 18, I did. 19, I had heard that story. Yeah, 18, 18. and then so he did then, a great job with students for a long time. So actually. yeah, I'm thinking, how old was he? Or was 23? Bill Krulish our first youth pastor? Yeah, I think Bill <laughs> Krulish was our first part-time uh, yeah, youth pastor. Yeah, he was pastor. probably our first guy. Billy was, and then he moved him. into children yeah. and other things. And then yeah. Billy, who Billy, who was there, did a great job of reaching. I think our, that yeah, because Billy was a little older students. then. Yeah, did. Grow up. Um, so, yeah, we were growing, you know. We had a part-time secretary, a part-time youth pastor, a uh, part-time worship leader, uh, and then Eve was volunteering on a lot of the kids' stuff, I think. And then Bill Krulish ended up doing he kids, He ended up too. doing kids, yeah. yeah. Bill Krulish, saying. if you're listening to this, thank you for all you did at Spring Hills and for raising such a beautiful He's daughter. kind of a legend because I met yeah, him Bro, one he time. He is a legend. But I've heard a lot, a about, I've heard a lot about Bill. The and legend Karen, of Spring Hills. Karen was instrumental, too. She did kids yeah. part-time. Oh, yeah. Don't leave, don't leave her out. Don't yeah. leave and a shout-out to uh, Glenn Schultz, who was the worship leader uh, that came in after the— you know, that really helped our church grow. I didn't. Oh, the one that you said very yeah. worshipful. But would that Glenn, be, don't want to miss what you did. You did a great that job. Years, I can't remember what year that was. Yeah. I guess we'll have, we should be better prepared. We need to write down. Our, we'll have <laughs> Well, that. I didn't send you these notes. And that was, uh, that was p- partly, I was like, no, maybe it'll be better just off the cuff. And I don't know. I we'll like off out. the cuff. Sure. How about this? Was there anything in those first, let's, let's now go up to like 2003. So think the first 10 years, right? 11 years. Was there anything that you two can remember really disagreeing on how you were going to make, make a certain move or whatever, like where you just did not see eye to eye on it? And then who was right? No, I, I was right, but I don't remember. Why are you leaning into your mic like that? To really emphasize. Just to clarify. Okay, I'm going to move up to my to mic. Man. I don't yeah. remember. God I don't has. Remember. We've been fortunate. So, yeah, we've been us. fortunate we're, with we're that. Really we, that's great. We that's are a, able what I was to hoping talk to things through, pray, and talk. We, I mean. We end up pretty much on the same page now most what about of the with, time. What about with God? Was there anything that you were resistant towards that he was calling you to do? Resistant. Um, ah. Hmm. You know, I'll tell you what, we, we had admit. this, we didn't talk about this. We, what? we probably around, 
I remember now. It would have been when it would have been in the first ten years, maybe year seven. Tell me, we had a church that wanted to merge, wanted oh. us to merge with them. Oh, okay. This okay. was a little dark point. Yes. Yeah, they wanted to merge with us. Us, and we were at a plateau, plateau. and uh, it was you know, it was kind of interesting. Like mm-hmm. they had a building. And uh-huh. they were growing, and they wanted to merge with. They wanted us to merge with them. So yeah. they had a nice piece of property in a building. A building, mm-hmm. and we really looked Huge into facility. it. It was a real test of mm-hmm. the vision again, because mm-hmm. um, you, you know. And then you, we had some people that wanted to do it, yeah. other people that didn't want to do it. So it was kind of a tricky time You'd for our leaders. You'd become good friends with the pastor, yeah, the I lead like pastor. The guy. You guys got along really well, but then. Yeah, when we explored it, it was like nah. it was going to kill. It was going to kill Spring Hills Spring again. Hills. Yeah, and um, but we had to walk that out. We, we had, had to, to go through out. all the steps in order to see that and realize it and realize no God. How close were you to actually doing it? Mm-hmm. Pretty close. Okay, close I mean, enough. And then the, it just did. God yeah, was telling you not enough, the right move. I think the board had the boards met together. Or just yeah, the, the, we had like that, was, and we were exploring things, and then. Just more and more came out. Um, so I think somebody came up page. to me and said they really didn't want the vision of Spring Hills to die. Because mm. we were, at a, like I said, a plateau. We were kind of exhausted. Mm-hmm. Going back, thinking about that year, it, it was a difficult year with some, you know, people within the church. I mean, it's just a tough year. So merge, ah, it sounds good, you know. But Something uh, fresh, something, something big. Something fresh, you know. And they'd coach um, each. And then, yeah, I have, a, I have another guy happening. to teach with and all mm-hmm. that stuff. But uh, um, somebody came up to me and said they didn't want the vision of Spring Hills to die. And God used that. That's encouraging, though. Yeah, well, God used that uh, in my life to because, say, yeah. keep going. It was a firm, yeah. yeah. And, we re- and we, as soon as we realized, we just realized it. It was like God yeah. showed us. And God yes. said, keep going. Keep I'm going. not finished with you. Yes. <laughs> And then he's since the, that pastor since, well, he's retired now. Yeah, he's moved moved on. Moved to Southern Cal. Yeah, he moved on. Anyways, good guy though. Yeah. So let's do this real quick. Let's just kind of sum up where we're at now in this story. Okay. Where so are we? we've got, well, yeah. So we, unless there's something I'm missing here, we started, we, we had the church plan, right? End of 90, 92, you guys, or that year, you merge through that time. You grew quite a bit, it sounds like, by, what was it, uh, 400 people, 350, 400 when you yeah. did the, the Purpose Driven Life small group. Yeah. Um, and then you said about seven years in, so about 2000, that was when the other merger was possible. Yeah, somewhere in there. And Maybe then it, it was sounds like. I think that. it was earlier than that. I think, I think, I think once mm-hmm. we hit Purpose Driven Life, we were really encouraged. So I think I took us back. You, you looped I us took, back. I looped us back before. We may have to correct a lot the of this next that's week. Okay. That's when, okay. When we write the book. The spring Yeah, are you guys going to write a book? Yes. It will be. Lord willing. That's cool. Lord willing. We'll have the dates. I have them written down and we have journals and we have all kinds of things. Have you, have you been, uh, I should bring in my journal. Have you been, um, mentors to any church planters? Oh yeah. That's cool. That's really cool. I was, I tried to get my dad to, I mean, my dad's a, it's a long distance, uh, from, from where we're from, but they were only about two years in when I came here. And oh, I had yeah. been, I talked to you a few times about it, Brett, just, uh, Hey, what do I, how do I help? I want to help my dad still. Yeah. What, what advice can I give him? What encouragement can I give him? There were things like, don't do the, don't do the, um, baby dedications and stuff <laughs> that, cause your visitors don't know these families, you know, things yeah, like yeah, that. 20, like, 20, 25 uh, minute baby dedication. Yeah. So things like that, that you had shared, <laughs> um, just those kinds of things, but don't make your announcements last 15 minutes. You and know, then, things, things okay. Like so then in 2000, 2000, up to 2000, when did Billy and, and Glenn come along? Were they at the same time? No, Billy was earlier. And then Glenn and Tanya. Glenn might have been around 2000. See, this is where we need to go back and check because I don't want to say the wrong thing. Yeah. Um, so they attended our church first for a long yeah. time and was um, the, the Andres or the Schultz? Schultz. Okay. Both. But yeah. But um, yes. Then Glenn I think and Tanya. They, I think Glenn and Tanya invited us over for lunch and uh, Glenn pulled out his guitar Started singing some worship songs and we're going, oh my goodness! And this so guy's then, he, talented. So then yeah. he volunteered for. Then he volunteered I would say for, for a year long two, time, yeah, year or two, um, and then eventually. You know, the most that I've seen of yeah. Billy and Glenn was on the softball field when we oh, played funny. against. Yeah. Yeah. They're both hey, against the good way, players. They're good softball players. That yeah, hasn't come good. up. I'm you not. had you had a great softball oh, team for God. years. Spring Hills was dominant. I'm just saying. They split, it, they they split really us was. up when I got here. We had two teams, and it was yeah. like if you, you if you would have stacked it all with, like, the talent, 
It's been great. But I give a lot of credit to the way that actually, again, we'll give Kath more credit here because she split the teams up. She actually split it up really well to where I met some people through that and got uh, to know them see, really well. That's like, the main thing. Like Tyler Hayes. I did not know Tyler before I played softball with him. Yeah, and, and Pete, another guy uh-huh. that's in the band now. Uh-huh. I got to meet some people that I didn't know. I never had talked to Jason before. See? Um, and then I got to know them. So it was really great. We didn't win a championship, but well, this was uh, a very competitive team. Yeah, this team, uh, our main goal was to, to win. win and then to have fellowship. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. See, and that's, I appreciate that because I have talked about how competitive I am. I do not like, I hate to lose more than I love to win. Uh, did you, um, Brett played, did you play shortstop? I played short. My brother Scott played some short. I, I mean, these guys, I played but they were second. actually good. We, we turned a lot of double plays in our time. So this is when so- their bodies were Spring working. Hill softball yeah. was the heyday. Yeah, okay. we, we were we were dominant. This is 30 years ago. Against Santa Rosa Bible. Ago. Santa Rosa Bible was a powerhouse in those days. And it was always between the two of us at the end. And I think... I, I don't. Again, I don't have the notes, but I'd say Spring Hills won more of those. There's some trophies that I've seen around. Yeah, they're There's around. There's some trophies around. Yeah, that's really uh, that's a a big win, right? I just don't know. Um, so leading into the next chunk of this, we'll get to it next week. We're going to get into how we became how we got onto this campus, um, which is a huge story. You do share this at Growth Track. Some I don't know how much you get into it. It's only you only share for about twenty minutes, I think, right? Yeah, it's about a, it's a so it's, you it's a micro it's an amazing version yeah, of it. It's an amazing story, but I know this story well. So yes. I think this story will take up a whole episode, and then we'll oh, yeah. we'll end the series on uh, you know once you got on this campus to where we're at now, um, and maybe I mean it might t- get through all the. There's a lot that's happened in three years here, man. And we I've may remember some years. more things. Yes. I've only been here for three years, and I can't. I look back at it's um, a lot. 2017, like Jan- January, February, when I first got here, the coffee kiosk wasn't out there. No. Yeah. It was still just folding tables. Yeah. Uh, there was just so many things that were so different here. Sure. And now it's like, I think the, uh, um, there was no screen on the back still. Yeah, the stage no. has just changed things, a lot. They, oh, no. no screen. We were actually one Kids of the videos. Kids changed a lot. Playground. The platform on the front wasn't there. So, no. like, the yeah. band was way pushed back. Yes. Yeah. And you were on the. Uh, and I don't the think we there. had the playground. No. Um, the playground was here when I got here. Oh, was it? Oh, it okay. was. Yeah. I was three years old. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, yeah, we'll get to that next week. Which, what was the year that you guys started searching for this property? Probably seriously around 2003. Oh, yeah. Oh, perfect. It, yeah. We, yeah, we actually made an, o- we made an offer two years before we bought it. Oh, that's okay. That, yeah. Well, what, there's the teaser right there. That's yeah. the, what offer was it? <laughs> Find out next week on the story of Spring Hills. Great way to end it. Was it, right? an it, was an, <laughs> it was an unaccepted offer. It was an unaccepted offer. Why was it unaccepted? Because <laughs> God's timing is perfect. Because we didn't have any money. <laughs> God's timing is perfect. It's going to be a, a lot great. of faith. Guys, though. this is a this is the, the best cliffhanger we've ever had. So 2003 to, what, 2010 was when we came here, right? That's right. next week. So join us on part three of Story of Spring Hills. Thank you, Brett. Thank you, Eve.